The city is probably the oldest, most enduring invention of our civilization. The words are interchangeable. Civilization, civil, civic, city. Cities evolve over time. They respond to crises. And historically, they emerge from crises stronger than ever before. So what are the future trends for cities? And what are the lessons of history? Hello, everybody. I have to say that is a, no, I have to really say that it's a great honor for me uh, to contribute to the um, Norman Foster Foundation's um, masterclass series uh, on cities. Um, my contribution will show you um, around the topic of cities. So what I've been trying to do um, using material and uh, available materials uh, and then trying to activate uh, communities, getting people be part of the process to create structures that to me fit the best to the needs uh, of, of the cities. Uh, I will mostly talk about my experience in Africa, um, the place where I was born and grew up. Um, uh, you will see through my examples that I'm putting material uh, in front of interest, um, especially uh, the most available material uh, in the place. Uh, so, okay, I mean, <laughs> this is fact. Cities are really uh, attracting people. So these being cities in, in Africa as well as many places uh, attract people. So uh, that for cities are growing through migration, but also through the normal growth of the city. Cities in Africa, let's say in Burkina Faso nowadays, are facing uh, a dramatic growth. Um, so how cities are being developed in Burkina? Uh, they just grow, people come from, <laughs> let's say from villages and everyone try to add um, his uh, house uh, to the city cluster. So this way the city is, is spreading like really like a huge carpet. Um, somehow, um, you know, for the countries, for the leader, but for leading um, uh, professionals that are contributing to, the, to, to construct cities, the West is a big example. So uh, this being um, architecture is something like a concern of big corporation. Um, so even myself, I was looking architecture as something far, you know. Um, uh, but then I got a chance to study architecture in Germany, um, coming from a little village. I was trying to see how can I use my skills, you know, to contribute to the development first of my, 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 my village uh, to support the community. This way, I've been going through to analyze why, why, what are the reasons why lo local uh, materials, traditional construction materials are being uh, neglected, rejected by the population. Uh, I see that if like clay, most people, more than 90% of the population in Burkina Faso are using clay since generations. But due to a fact that they are uh, you know, they are subject to, uh, to the weathering, like rainwater is destroying clay buildings, pushing the population to repair them uh, after every rainy season. So people try to reject them, uh, calling them as poor people uh, material, construction material. Uh, in fact, you can see how they get easily destroyed um, and then people just abandon. So how uh, the community came together to, to fix a clay uh, monument, uh, like a mosque, you know, 
uh, is something that is really inspiring to me. Um, I was just thinking, how can you use the most available material that is shipped because it's available to create something sustainable? So um, I tried to talk to the community. We've been going around to see how schools are being built. And then because of the, uh, of the problems with the clay, which is not resistant to water, um, most school buildings are little cement block, uh, boxes that are really not uh, uh, providing a comfortable place for teaching, you know, and for the kids to stay in. Uh, and they are, by the way, dark in the place where you have sunlight during the day to enter a classroom and see how dark it is. It was something that I couldn't accept. So this uh, is why I went back to just talk to the community. How do you do? You talk to the community, you talk to the, your people and say, and now clay is fragile. And now wood, local wood are subject to termite uh, attack. But if we want to have a better future, creating buildings that inspire our kids and uh, we have to build on with the material that we have the most. So, um, and so how do you did? Then the next step will, after we talk to the community, the next step was to try to improve the quality of clay blocks, clay um, uh, bricks called adobe. So what I did, uh, I found a so-called, um, uh, you know, low cost technology, which consists on adding up to 10% uh, of cement in clay and you mix it to create bricks. So that, what, that was the first step. And then the second step is to get the community to be involved in the building process. And we use rocks that are available to create foundation, which help us save a lot of resources, uh, but also show the population the way how they can prove their housing. You know, uh, if you have a clay house, uh, most of the reason why they, they, they're falling apart during the raging season is the upcoming uh, humidity, you know, so which then um, help to destroy the housing or causes the destruction of clay um, houses. So here I was with this idea, I was able to build a, a, a school in my home uh, village. Gandu using clay that really directly um, um, uh, from, from the site and um, to create classrooms that really, that are, um, that are so great that um, are good and uh, where the kids can really um, be concentrated because the condition inside are, um, are good for, for teaching. Um, Afterward, um, you know, we, the, 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 the outcome was surprising to everyone um, and to myself. Um, here, if you deal in a place like I am acting, the most important thing is how do you convince uh, rural communities to understand uh, architecture, but also to use local materials. What I mostly do, I'm doing very simple sketches, uh, which shows the building, what is going to be. Um, and then I also do a lot of mock-up just to convince the communities. Uh, you know, let me allow myself to use something that sounds intellectual. You know, I read it somehow. I think Mosen Musafavi wrote about it in a book. Implic explicate is implicate. By explaining my, my people, uh, um, about the material, about engineering, about construction techniques, I get them be part of the, the process. And then, uh, you know, afterward they will ap they appreciate the structure that we've been doing together. And so that is it, we keep doing and building. And then with, with this kind of, of approach, I was very, very successful um, facing myself with the request to be, do building for other communities. Um, and I have to say, for example, a healthcare center in Leo that we built has been really um, uh, laid, uh, so has been constructed uh, 
really after the example from Gando, where I was able to create a healthcare center and later on create housing that, you know, attract doctors that came to volunteer. And this building is remarkable. Today, if you look at uh, in the shape of the city, you will see uh, that the, the structure we have created uh, is like a, a green oasis. But it's more than a green oasis if you look at it carefully. You will see that we created um, using clay uh, and then metal sheet for the roofing, clay for walls. Um, we was able to create a sort of structure that are inspiring to the people in Burkina Faso. Um, and then we created spaces where parents can be treated while the kids will play outside. You know, in the place normally that are that are that is connected to to dirt and also to death because hospitals people in Burkina Faso just go to hospitals when it's too late um, and so you know that is the significance of that what we're doing and for the housing uh, instead of just building a structure to host um, doctors and volunteer what we did uh, what I did I tried to copy uh, the size of the normal uh, housing. So with this approach, I wanted to create a size that is familiar to the community uh, so that I can adapt this later to their, um, to their own uh, structure or compounds. And so this being, I went back to learn from the tradition. Here, an example, uh, or looking around to example uh, from Gando, where you see the organic form of the compound. And then I took uh, this as an example and to create um, blocks uh, where uh, really um, uh, you can just see what I'm talking about using local material to create something that uh, live, would have a longer life. Um, where you have outside, uh, outside uh, uh, locally used, cement blocks to protect the clay walls from outside. But inside, you have clay bricks. And if you're inside, you feel enclosed, you know, uh, or let's say better, embraced, you know, by the, um, by the material and by the quality of the material that we've been uh, using. So here now, I would like to show you to talk about a high school I have been working on, um, or let's say it's more than a high school. I would talk about uh, a, a project called Lise Schorge uh, and a BIT campus. Um, this is a project where you have a high school, later you have a university, a sort of university, a sort of institution or institute where you teach the young people coming from the uh, uh, high school next door um, or where you introduce them to technology, you know, uh, to uh, digital uh, community, digital technology. Um, the site when we started is, it was a, a desert, you know, uh, uh, just a few compounds around it. And the site was accidented because it's, it's, it was free because it was a, uh, let's say a sort of river basin. So, um, and this, the site grow within the time at about six years that I've been working there. Uh, creating first this, the high school. Um, with the idea uh, with the high school, I wanted to create a sort of compound, you know, a sort of uh, uh, enclosed structure, uh, creating a courtyard where the kids will play, you know, during the day. Um, and, I, and here again, I wanted to improve the ventilation system that I have been developing uh, by my first projects in Gando, my hometown. And in this project, the, it was key to use laterite. You know, laterite is same to clay, is a local construction material, but people reject it because they call it poor people construction materials because of the same uh, consequences uh, that you have using clay bricks, you know? they are subject to water. But laterite is a, a wonderful uh, construction material. It is abundant also like clay. And if you know how to use it, it is 
more resist, resistant to water than, um, than clay. So here we try to improve also the quality of the, the bricks by cutting them. So if you cut them, they become regular. And to my people, they become modern construction material. Um, something that I like to highlight here is the fact that wood for construction in Burkina Faso is coming from Ghana and then mostly the Ivory Coast. Mm. If you go through the country and see how this wooden material is being pro, um, transported to the country, you will understand why there is no wood in Burkina and why uh, I'm trying to find alternative to this uh, material. And so uh, the best thing will be to show you how a track is going through the, the savanna, the desert, and going um, through very long pace, like a 1,000 kilometer, to bring the wood to the capital city, Ouagadougou. Then uh, you will much more appreciate why I have said, OK, I will start to introduce eucalyptus wood. I will use locally growing eucalyptus wood to my architecture. This wood is abundant. People use it for temporary uh, shelter, for scaffolding, or for fire. What I wanted to do is to use this wood and create a facade. So the architect among you will laugh if I'm talking about Brise Soleil. And I would love to show you how I use this locally available uh, material um, that is not being seen as construction material and how I use it, I introduce it to building that has become part of construction material in my country because of the lack of, of commercial wooden um, uh, material. So here, what we do again, far from Gando, I have developed a capacity to get the local be involved, you know? And if you go through the project I'm doing, you will see that we have a lot of women coming, sitting and sending wooden pieces to create um, facades or roof ceilings. This is also good because it provides the local community with resources. The buildings I'm creating are generating uh, uh, income for the locals, you know. And then afterward, if you see how the project has been developed and you see the result, um, you see this what uh, here an example of a facade of the high school uh, where you see clearly the ventilation towers that attempt to bring more comfort within the classrooms, uh, but also the facade that just cover the building and protect it from the element, but also from the sun, you know. Uh, but just, uh, uh, you know, arrange the way that it allows light to, to enter the building. So creating um, a buffer between the outside world and then the classrooms um, where you have like a space where the student can stay during the day to have a recreation. And classrooms that are bright, you have light. Um, and though this inspired, you know, I mean, Better cities are the cities that will inspire the generation. There are cities where you have buildings that inspire the users. This is what I'm doing. And by applying eucalyptus, uh, clay, or laterite. So here, the example. Now the high school is done. And I'll show you, I will talk a little bit about, about the IT, the, uh, so the BIT. Uh, by the way, BIT is like a trying to mimic uh, MIT, you know, Massachusetts, Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the US. Uh, so the client wanted to call Burkina Institute of Technology. So that was it. But no matter what, for me as architect, I'm trying to look around and to see how I can use local material to create more impact, you know, for, for uh, the, the, the building, you know, I'm trying to see how I can use local material to maximize uh, the quality, you know, uh, but to reduce the cost, but also to create uh, a bigger ecological, um, uh, um, you know, 
quality for the structure we are creating by reducing the, uh, the, the carbon footprint um, of my structures. Here, by this high school, okay, this is, this, this is the reason why by the, uh, by the BIT project, we want not to, not to simply use clay, like we are being using them, creating bricks, um, or to use laterite, but I wanted to use clay and pour it like you will do with concrete, you know, just to, to, to mix the clay uh, with cement, sand and gravel and pour it, you know, so that, that for you need a, a metal uh, structure, uh, that what we use it. And then uh, at the end, uh, I happened to create um, um, a form that can be used to pull an entire classroom. So you will pull at one time a complete classroom, and then you will dismount um, um, the, firm, the, the, the form, and you just throw them the time when there is a need to add uh, another classroom, uh, my team again goes, install the form, and they pull the classroom. That was the idea behind um, this high school project. You know, everyone is talking about population growth in Africa. So what does this mean? It means that you need a lot of schools. You know, I guess in the coming years, more than 30,000 schools will be needed. Uh, you know, um, so this way with the form that we are putting in place, you will create very easily a classroom when there is need. You know, uh, for example, uh, in Burkina, in this campus, there was the idea, and then we start to just pull uh, every classroom uh, when there was need, using the same framework that can be extended and do um, different size of classrooms. Um, the campus is being uh, growing incredibly, um, it is good to see how you can see the city um, growing to uncrush our uh, site. Um, so, and then the greenery that we've been putting in place also. And then, you know, this way we have structure that just um, from outside, um, you know, attempt to protect the user against the, um, the, the weathering uh, from outside. But inside you have a a, a, a great place where students can sit, can meet, and classrooms where they can stay and, and sit and have lessons. And here again, talking about ventilation, uh, why I'm talking about passive ventilation, you know, in the place that is growing very fast, where there is a big need to build, you know, it's good to try to go passive, especially in the place that is poor. Burkina Faso belongs to the poorest countries in the world. I think you can't do better than using passive ideas uh, in your architecture to create cool and comfortable place for the, the, the student. So here we create again, like uh, the idea of creating uh, shadows uh, and then um, protective elements to create space where the student can really stay and sit and enjoy uh, lessons, class or themselves while they're having a recreation. But then the wind will escape, the hot wind will escape. It's like simply the venturi system that I'm applying. And so this way I'm able to create rooms, space for kids. Um, and I mean, if I have a statement to, to say here, I would like to say, in regard of talking about how Africa is going to grow in terms of population, but also uh, um, in terms of urbanization, uh, I want to say that in Africa, um, uh, you know, uh, talent is spread the same like in the rest of the world. Uh, the thing is, uh, what we're missing are opportunities. Um, and then if you, of course, my work is um, taking place uh, under very challenging conditions, you know, um, 
how to convince people to use a material that is being seen as poor people material, how to resist the attraction of the West where everything is glass, glass palace, pa palaces, glass towers, everything looking great, beautiful, you know. But if you just say talent is equally distributed in Africa ever, as everywhere, what we can do is to use the most available material to create places that are inspiring to the uh, generation, the next generation, to the kids coming from these growing populations and places that inspire this generation to enable them to enable them to contribute to build our cities for tomorrow. So thank you very much. And I would like to end with this image showing how the city is growing to really um, to really embrace the structure that are, up, are being um, building. Just this example in Kudugu, uh, the, the, the site of the Shorga uh, um, um, High School, as well as uh, the BIT campus. Thank you very much.